This is the Grind It Podcast. We know just like grinding a handrail or across the coping can be challenging at times, so can life be. We share God's word and personal stories to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. Today we are going to start James chapter 2. Woo! But before we get into James chapter 2, we're going to introduce... We have a lot of guests with us uh, today. At some point, we're going to have to get more microphones. Oh, yeah. And, and maybe move into the living room. Oh. That would be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm down. And if we didn't have so much car noise going down the road, we could do it outside on our nice day. I know. That would be really Maybe awesome. one of these days. We'll just have to. I mean, we did have a bird chirping last week <laughs> at the back door. <laughs> like one inside. Chir- awesome. Chirping the Let me in. Let me in. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go around the table. Introduce, you've been on it before. This is like your third time, right? You're a, so yeah. you're a pro now. Veteran. Not not a pro now, but no, a, pro, no. a pro now. Okay. I'm Jessica. I've been here before. And Jessica. And, 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 and Jessica, with Liv's help, I understand, led her first person to the Lord this hey, week. Yeah. That's bigger than a golf clap. Start the wave, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you won't see these on camera. It's just us three on camera. They they elected to not be on camera, so. but they are here. I'm Olivia, also known as Liv. Hey, Olivia. Olivia, why don't you tell me where you're from? California. <laughs> <laughs> it's the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beverly Hills, I guess. All right. Jesus. All right, bread maker. Yeah, and this is Roach. L- literal. Mm-hmm. Bread maker because she made bread for communion today. It is. Amen. Carrie Rose. So much better than that styrofoam we eat. Woo! Oh, the Hot bread, baby. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Hot bread. <laughs> and that jam on it was good too. I just couldn't get the text out of my mouth. Jam on it. Jam on it. <laughs> okay. Go. I'm Shelby. I'm not doing it. <laughs> 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 Hello, Shelby. Shelby. She's not going to pay you more. Shall I'm you? the redneck of the bunch. What? <laughs> I'm Jimmy. I, I, I'm Jimmy Bollinger. Um, very happy to be here, and um, just to these gracious hosts, thank you so much for allowing me to be able to speak about God's word and uh, right here in this beautiful atmosphere. Jimmy, tell us a little bit about you're the worship leader. Where? At? Yeah, uh, I'm the worship leader at uh, Lord's Disciples in Maryville, Tennessee. Now, what what is the Lord's Disciples all about? Um, we are a biker ministry. That's what we started out as, and, and it pretty much is. And that's not that. ten speeds and no, 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 banana, no, no. banana that's seat. Uh, <laughs> We're talking about motorcycles here. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, we've been around for twenty five years now. Hallelujah. And uh, I gave my life to Christ two years before that. So this year is my twenty seventh year of, oh. of being a, 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 a soul saved by Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, we uh, help uh, administer to and run a. a uh, a women's shelter uh, for women and children. And um, so God blesses us uh, by, by getting to do that and going out into the community. We, we help the, the, needy, the needy and the homeless in Knoxville also. We, we go feed them a couple of times a month and, and, and minister to them. So, uh, but I'm just blessed. Uh, I know Sister Mary here, she's a wonderful, wonderful singer songwriter. And uh, her husband, Randall, um, uh, I went got to be blessed to go to Nashville with him last year. Hallelujah. Right. Yeah. And uh, so that was such a blessing for me. And I, I thank them so much. Hallelujah. We're glad to be here. Amen. I'm glad to be here. Now, I don't know. I think I know who that is. Mary, right? Yeah. That, that's what I was talking about. Mary I can't Mary. see very good. Quite so. contrary. <laughs> so Jimmy has legally blind. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But God's going to heal me. That's right. right. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, Hallelujah. let today he, be the day. He, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, 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 a miracle to, to speak of, too, to, to let the world know. Come on. Um, well, uh, with man, uh, anything that he tries to do might not work, but everything God does always works. Hallelujah. Now, um, I had this eye operated on, and I have a, 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 a bubble in there to keep my retina in place. Uh, the doctor t- did that during the surgery. Well, this, this retina was uh, dislocated, just like this one was. But about four months ago, the Lord put my retina back in place. Amen. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. So this this uh, retina is back in place, so the doctor won't have to address that. But uh, as soon as I get the bubble out of this eye, I'll 
I'll have my good vision back to be able to drive again. Come and on. all the glory is to God. And all the glory is to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I can't, can't give him enough uh, uh, gratitude and thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So what Jimmy's not saying is how well he can play a guitar, yeah. <laughs> acoustic or electric. He can shred it's on God it. is good. No, I can't shred. I just, yeah, I you just shred. play. And I his just, voice is absolutely just, amazing. Would you give us a little taste? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some black morning when this life is over, keep going. I fly away. And, um, and that's where you go. And on God's celestial shore, I fly away. There you go. Let's hear a little, a little taste. But Jimmy also writes songs as well. He, he's got. He, he's been playing some tunes for us while we were eating supper before we. We They're all from Jesus, hallelujah. But the dude can, can belt himself. it and he can play it and he loves the Lord. It's awesome. Amen. I love he's, a, he's a blessing, a blessing yes. to us. Hallelujah. Yes, and thank you for when you do join us uh, yes, and playing amen. with us. Yes, hallelujah. You're welcome. Of course, everybody, we know who you are. It's my beautiful wife. Hallelujah. Mary. Amen. Thank and you for the I'm, hostess. She's the I'm hostess. Randy Randall. Yes, amen. Thank you for Randy running. Pandy. The old, the old school <laughs> skateboarder. Your mommy calls me Randy Pandy. <laughs> you no, Randy he Pandy. reminds me of that guy uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, who? I don't know. Oh, I thought you just said one. Uh, uh, he reminds me from that guy from uh, um, the uh, Nickelodeon. You don't know. You, you look like his brother. With Jimmy Neutron? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know. No. 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 You know, those two guys. Uh, uh, Oh man, yeah, they were they were they were brothers and oh Drake Drake Drake, uh, Drake and uh, yeah. Josh Josh mm -hmm. yeah yeah you look like the, the yeah Sam used to watch all the time when he was in there does he not you know, does not think Drake so? Bell a little bit I have no idea oh, well, I son, know not my what son you used to speak watch of. the show all the time so that's okay. how I know okay yeah I know you I know he's watching you you this could be brothers okay you just have different color hair and different color eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well. But uh, with James chapter 2, it's just really a continuation of James chapter 1. And if you've been listening, we took eight podcasts to go through James chapter 1. Because it, it's a rich book, and we don't rush through anything, Jimmy. We, 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 Not in a hurry. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, we, we take our sweet while well, I do anyway, and then they just follow along. But, um, but in chapter 1, James did mention about uh, there, there was rich people and there were, there were <clears> poor people. In the church, it's the same way today. Nothing's changed. You got rich people, you got poor people. And we talk about what it means to be rich, actually. But if you want to talk about the scale, the bank, you know, how much money you have in the bank, that kind of rich is what what James is talking about. Um, and so at the start of chapter two, James, and you brought this out a while ago, okay, when uh, we were just going through the notes, James is calling out his. He, his, the brothers and sisters in Christ and how they show they are showing favoritism. Um, and so what we're going to talk about today is cliques in the church. And, you know, unfortunately, we, we think that it's a modern day thing, you know, um, and you see this in bigger churches, especially how a little clump of people will, they always sit in the same spot <coughs> Sunday after Sunday and they all associate with the people who sit around them and they don't know anybody else in the church. Not in just big churches. I, I shouldn't just say big churches. It happens even in small churches. Mm -hmm. We always we, we gravitate to the same seat and we met, we talk to the same people. Um, and so, uh, but this is this is not a new concept. It was going on right after the church started in the mm -hmm. book of Acts. And we'll see that all that in, in just a little bit. We'll get deeper into that. Um, we, will pray. we are going to pray. I'm glad you said that. But <laughs> James is, I, I, I want to use my Andy Griffith reference. Okay, and my by all means. Because uh, James feels the need to address the cliques and like Barney Fife, nip it in the bud. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So nip it in the bud. Nip it, nip it, mm -hmm. nip it. <laughs> so before we nip it, you can pray. <laughs> then we'll nip it. In the bud. Not the butt. Oh, but the butt. Lord, help us. Okay. Not the flowering bud. Thank you, Father. <laughs> and not the Budweiser. Hey, Thank man. you for this day <laughs> and for your word. Thank you that by it we grow and we are transformed from faith to faith and glory to glory. Lord, that's what we ask. 
today. We ask for illumination. We ask for revelation of who you are, who you desire to be in us and through us. Yeah, Lord, take us deeper so that we know you more intimately and can share you more bold, boldly and courageously. Hallelujah. We ask for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Shelby. Verses 1 through 13 is what we're going to cover. My brothers and sisters, believers... All right, so wait. So he, he's talking to believers, right? Right. He's talking to my dear brothers and sisters. So just, just to get the full context here, he's talking to believers. Okay. All right. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man, a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes. And a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and, and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one, one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, said you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Yeah. Amen. So when you were reading this, I thought about uh, the, the Greg Laurie movie, Jesus Revolution. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh? Seen. You haven't seen that one yet? Oh, there, there's shocked that. We need to watch that one. We, we watched it. It's really good. Um, so in Jesus Revolution, not spoiler alert if you haven't seen the movie, but like what happens is the hippies, that's, that's in the, when the hippie movement, uh, the Jesus movement started flowing through the hippies. And, and they started coming into that church, Calvary, is it Calvary Chapel, is that the name of it? I think so. Mm -hmm. And, um, and have you seen it? Y'all seen it? So you remember what happened? Yes. The, the, the hippies started coming in and the church people was like, no. And they like we, moved to one yeah, side. Yeah, they moved to one side. <laughs> and, you know, and we, we don't want to be barefooted because the they hippies were barefoot, it. right? And, and so these clicks, <laughs> these clicks were forming right off the bat, you know, and then a lot of people got up and walked out because uh, the, the pre I can't remember the preacher's name now, but he accepted the hippies. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, was the, one of the coolest parts of the movie, in, in, in my opinion, is when uh, the, one of the, the old men that was yeah. with that group that had separated themselves, you know, when people are getting yeah. walking out, the old man gets up and walks over and sits with the hippies. Yeah. And he puts mm -hmm. his arms around some hippies and they start singing. <laughs> you know, so in other words, that, that showed unity, which I think Amen. is something you're going to be bringing up here in, in, in a little bit. Um, so, you know, I was, I just thought that was a really cool uh, a, a picture, if you've seen the movie, uh, how, you know, God desires unity, right? Mm -hmm. And and But not cliques. And, and you see this in, in a lot of, of the bigger churches, like I mentioned a while ago about how, you know, um, and unfortunately a lot of the bigger churches kind of push the concept because they, they, they're so big and it's hard to get, when you got a thousand people sitting in one church service and you have to have like four or five church service and you got a four or five thousand member congregation. It kind of breeds those small it, groups, it right? It breeds the small groups and then they push you into small groups. Um, but a lot of people like that. A lot of people want to be in that kind of environment because they want to sit and hide and that way they don't have to get involved. Mm -hmm. But I'm not down with that. So 
All you Grinded Podcast listeners, I know you enjoy some good music, but I want to tell you about some awesome music. Now, my friend, Mary Gamboa, she's also the worship leader at the church where I worship, called Authentic Church here in Alcoa, Tennessee. We'd love to invite you to come out and check us out sometime when you get a chance. We start at 10 a.m. and we're on Lindsay Street here in Alcoa. Mary has produced a new album called Jealous, and you can check that out anywhere music is being streamed. But you can also check it out at marygamboamusic.com. That's Mary G A M B O A music.com. Go check that out. So, going back to this, this idea of clicks, <clears throat> obviously, uh, it, it's, a, it's a problem in the early church, and James is addressing that. Um, and they actually started. Uh, the first one that I could think of was Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. And if there's another one that y'all can think of before that, let me know. Um, but as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were, this is when the church first began. There were, I mean, because the church didn't start until Acts chapter 2. And this is just Acts chapter 6, so not very much time has passed. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek, you know, you know that's. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers saying that their widows were discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So in other words, there's some cliques forming here. Mm -hmm. These Hebrew-speaking are kind of shunning the Greek-speaking. You get the cliques forming. What was the problem? Well, they're, hold, they're withholding food. You know, the the, the Greek-speaking are hungry. And they're not getting, you know, because what happened what, uh, when the church first began, remember, everybody was pooling their stuff together. And there were none needy among them. Right. Right. But then all of a sudden there are needy among them because the, the Hebrew speaking have formed cliques and we're leaving out the, the Greek speaking with this distribution of food. And so the 12, who are the 12? The 12 apostles. Yeah, minus Judas. Right. Added Matthias, right, in Acts chapter 1. So the 12, so they're still 12, uh, called a meeting of believers, and they said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the Word of God, not running a food program. That's New, New Living Translation. Not, not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and are full of the Spirit and wisdom, and we will give them this responsibility Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and in teaching the Word. Everyone liked this idea, and they chose the following. Stephen a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, probably butchering all these names, and Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread, and the number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. Mm. So cliques were forming, and there was a, a situation going on in the early church brought to the attention of the 12 apostles. And they was like, we got more important things to do. We got to yeah. nip it. Nip it in the butt. Got to nip in the butt. And they do. Uh, but we're going to see here in just a second. It, it just continues. Uh, even in, in, the, uh, in the churches, as it, the church continues to grow. And the church, because right now in Acts chapter 6, it's all in Jerusalem, right? Mm-hmm. Acts chapter 10, it starts spreading. Or no, Acts chapter 8 and 9. And from there on, it starts spreading. Um, the church of Corinth was bad about cliques. They, you know, the, we're going to see the rich people, uh, kind of like what James is talking about here in James chapter 3, the rich people are, are um, kind of like gathering together. Well, what's the old saying? Birds of a feather? Flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. That the rich people are flocking together and they're leaving out the poor people. And unfortunately, it's going on when they're taking the Lord's Supper. In 1 Corinthians 11, 17 through 22, it says, But in the following instructions, I cannot, Paul says, I cannot praise you. For it sounds as if more harm than good is done when you when you meet together as a, a body, right, of believers. First, I hear that there are divisions. What? There's cliques. There's divisions among you when you meet as a church. And to some extent, I believe it. But, of course, there must be divisions among you so that you 
uh, you who have God's approval will be recognized. He's kind of making fun of them. Sounds yeah. kind of tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, mm, tongue-in-cheek. When you meet together as a body of believers, you are not really interested in the Lord's Supper. So they're coming together and taking the Lord's Supper. For some of you hurry to eat your own meal without sharing with others. As a result, some go hungry while the others get drunk. So in other words, like, okay, so like we do the Lord's Supper every Sunday at our church. Like I say, Carrie made the bread for today. But we don't, we, we've kind of gone away from how they did the Lord's Supper. They had like meals. Mm -hmm. and they had fellowship, koinonia, and you know, and all this stuff. Yeah, the, the Lord, the Lord's word says, uh, Jesus said, "Do this in remembrance mm -hmm. of me." Um, just whenever you think of it. So many of them were having uh, the Lord's supper and taking His body and drinking His blood constantly because they were going from one place to the other, one house to the other. Yeah, and doing that. It, but they they did it as a corporate body here, mm -hmm. but they were taking the Lord's blood a little too much. Because they, they, Paul says literally that they were getting drunk. Yeah, yeah. When you meet together, you're not really interested in the Lord's Supper. Yeah, so you're not really interested in coming together and remembering the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus <laughs> and what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. For some, He says, for some of you hurry to eat your own meal without sharing with others. Mm -hmm. As a result, some go hungry while others get drunk. So you got some going hungry, you got some getting drunk off the because they eat wine. They didn't use grape juice. Or maybe it's fermented grape juice. Right. And he says, what? Don't you have your own homes for eating and drinking? In other words, eat your meals before you come if that's going to be the problem here. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Or do you really want to disgrace God's church and shame the poor? So there's, there's the issue. Do you want to disgrace God's church and shame the poor? What am I supposed to say? Do you want me to praise you? Well, I certainly would not praise you for this. And then also in the, the church at Corinth, had clicks over who baptized them. In 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 17, he says, I, Paul says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. So there's the unity that you brought up earlier before we started recording. Let there be no divisions in the church. Mm -hmm. Don't have these clicks. Divisions. Why? Well, what does the Bible say about divisions in because God? He's, unified. Yeah, he's not the author of confusion. He's not the mm -hmm. author of division. Mm -hmm. but a church, I mean, a kingdom divided against itself, Jesus says, it can't, stand. Stand. it can't stand. And so Paul says, let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and mm -hmm. purpose. For some members of Chloe's house, because you brought up home churches, when they, they, they had the home churches, and there was a house in this sister's place, Chloe. For some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. So there's some fighting going on because that's what division does. Mm -hmm. right? right. Separates and, and, and kind of like with these Hebrew speaking and the Greek speaking widows, there was some, that, that, when you're being left out, you get upset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? You don't feel like you're part of it because yeah. you're not. <laughs> exactly. And so that brings some hostility and some other you know, uh, feelings. And people let their feelings be known. Mm -hmm. So Paul says, So some of you are saying, Oh, wait, I'm sorry. For some members of the Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. So some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos. Or I follow Peter. Or I follow I, only Christ. I follow only Christ. <laughs> yeah. Has yeah. Christ been divided into factions? In other words, mm -hmm. is, is there cliques yeah, there in is. Christ? It's not supposed to be. No. Has Christ been divided into factions? No. Was I, Paul, crucified for you? No. Well, of course he wasn't. Uh, were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? <laughs> of course not, he says. I thank God. I thank God. Nah, nah, nah. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except for Crispus. That's not Rice Krispies. That's Crispus. Crispus. And Gaius. For now, no one can say they were baptized in my name. Oh, yes, I also baptized the household. It's, it's kind of like he forgot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he had this afterthought. Oh, yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. So, in other words, if I let you out, I'm sorry. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news and not with clever speech for fear that the cross of Christ will lose its power. 
So the church in Corinth had many issues, mm -hmm. many, many issues. But one of their big issues was division mm -hmm. or cliques. Is the rich people leaving the poor people out during the Lord's Supper? Um, and then you got these little divisions, these little cliques about why well, I was baptized by this person, by that person, by that person. Okay. But it also, and this is, Jimmy, I think where you, you brought this, uh, you talked about this a little bit while ago, how it uh, affected the apostles, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Because they're filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you know, if you think about it, they had cliques when they were walking with Jesus. Yeah, they did. They really did. I just not thought about that. But remember Peter and John? No, not Peter and John. John and James and James John. James and John. Sons got, of thunder. Yeah, sons of thunder. They, <laughs> they, they got their mom involved in it. They won't, you know. Right, yeah. let, let my son sit on your right and left. Yeah. Yeah, in other words, we want to be in a position of power. Jesus said, yeah, that's not my position right. to give it to you. But he said, I assure you, you will drink from the same cup I drink from. Yeah. So, that, meaning, you know, the... Uh, uh, the abuse that Christ went through, and the, and the heartbreak, and the um, and the uh, denying of Christ while they were speaking to many different people, and uh, but he, that's what he said. He said, "I assure you, you will drink from the same cup." Yeah. So and they did. So. Did you? But what, when when James and John, yeah, James and John said that got their mom involved in it. Mm -hmm. What happened with the other ten disciples? You know they had to be... Oh, well, Luke. I think it's Luke that says it. Right. Yeah. I think it's Luke's gospel that says it. They were they were upset. I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but they, they, they were hot. And didn't it, maybe? I can't remember exactly how it puts that it. That sounds, sounds right. I have a couple of scriptures that it was making me think of, and I don't know if now's the time to interject or not. Sure. But, um, in Romans 10... Um, the word is near you it is in your mouth and in your heart that is the message concerning faith that we proclaim um, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved Hallelujah. for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified mm -hmm. and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved as scripture says anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame for Hallelujah. there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. Mm -hmm. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm -hmm. So obviously he was writing this to the church in Rome as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no difference between the Jew and the Gentile here in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, because everybody who calls on his name <coughs> will be saved. That's a good word, sister. And then in Ephesians, uh, I was looking at, oh, sweet Jesus, where can I, can I find it again? Oh, Ephesians 4. No, as a prisoner of the Lord, I call you, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you will receive. Be completely humble and gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Amen. You know, he's he's not making any bones about the fact that, okay, we are supposed to be unified as, as a body in him. Jesus said himself, there's to be no religion, only love of the Father. And here on this earth today, we've got over 3,000 religions. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though the whole world wasn't followers of Christ at the time, and still not today, but, um, you know, many other groups, false religions. Or, but he was talking about in his body, there was to be no, no, uh, other, no religion, only love of the Father. And there's dozens of our, uh, in, in our belief, in Christ, there's dozens of, like the denominations, yes, right? Yes, there's denominations. Then there's denominations inside down. denominations. That's right. There is to be no Jesus said so in the four Gospels. And, uh, so <laughs> anyway, we, we as humans, we just don't learn. I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> See, you made me think of Galatians 3, 26. Mm -hmm. For you are the children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. 
There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male right. or female. You are all one right, 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 right. in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. So act like it, family. That's right. Hallelujah. Shelby. I was actually going to go to Ephesians 4, but you got that one. Oh, okay. But in Ephesians 2, it says, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, mm -hmm. and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, whose purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Yeah. That talks about the Jew and Gentiles reconciled through Christ. Good stuff. Mm. So I'm going to show you how, um, like with the disciples, even when they were walking with Jesus, there was the divisions or cliques or little factions, however you want to say that. Uh, within those, that group in, in Galatians chapter 2 Paul's going to confront Peter over a situation that, that where he, he was kind of showing some uh, he was going along with the clicks mm -hmm. and the divisions uh, in, in chapter in Galatians chapter 2 it says in verse 11 when Peter came to Antioch so he's coming to, to visit you know the churches so like with Paul he's going around in this missionary journey started these churches with Barnabas so Peter's going to come and visit, right? So Peter came to Antioch. Paul says, I had to oppose him to his face for what he did was mm -hmm. very wrong. And this was, if you look it up in the Greek, it's hypocritical. It, yeah, it, right. it was, right. he, he got <laughs> his face and let him hear it. Mm -hmm. But when he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterward, when some friends of James came, talking about some Jews, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of the criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy, and even Barnabas, the son of encouragement, mm -hmm. was led astray by their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of everybody, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile. Don't you remember that vision that you had three different times on the, on, on the Simon the sheep, and Tanner's yeah. roof? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter, don't you remember that? You know, God says these people are clean now. Mm -hmm. He must have forgot it at one point. Or no, he was worried about what yeah. people was going to say about him meeting with the Gentile. Yeah, well, Jesus said what I make clean is clean indeed. Mm -hmm. So, right. But, you know, Peter was, a, to me, uh, if I can interject for a minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peter was a... a uh, 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 a hard thinking man. Oh, yeah. Peter tried to kill for Christ, remember? Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to cut that man's ear off. He was trying to split his head in two. Yeah. And, and the Lord just didn't mean for that to happen, so he cut his ear off. And then Christ put it, yeah. and put it back yeah. on. Well, you know as well as I do, anybody within the sound of my voice, that man had to convert to Jesus because of what he just did. For him right then. That's what, what my holy imagination thinks anyway. I hope it did. But uh, Peter tried to literally kill poor Christ. And Christ was like, no, that's not the way, Peter. Because right. he and was not trying to cut his ear off. No. Absolutely not. Well, and, and I think that's that's why Paul's so harsh on Peter, right? Because he's saying you should know better than what you're doing. Here. That's right. Because you're leading people astray by, by, by your division. Right? Come on, did we just talk about that a couple of podcast ago right lead by example oh yeah right lead by example doing. what no, what yeah. we do other people yes will see us doing and often follow suit right. Mm -hmm. right so you're right if if i'm like oh separating myself from the people that don't seem quite as desirable then and, and if i'm seen as a leader in the church don't you think other people are going to do the same thing right now conversely this can also be true, right? If we worship with complete abandon and total freedom, mm -hmm. then often it gives other people the the permission, if you will, to do the same. Hallelujah. Right? All about them. Um, Lead yeah. them you know, you're leading them, and you, you, you're, we are to set a good example for new Christians. Hallelujah. Because, you know, they, God's Word says, to start with, we were drinking the milk. But later on, when you uh, are serving God in, in a lengthy amount of time, you begin to eat the meat of, of what God's Word is. 
So the people that are, are drinking the milk, we, we have to we have to guide them gently mm -hmm. and the right way. Mm -hmm. right? Now, just mm -hmm. let me flip the coin on what you just said. That that that, that was all positive and good stuff. But what if what if we see like like Paul here? He sees Peter sinning mm -hmm. and leading others astray as well. And this is a pillar of the church, an right. apostle has been there from the beginning, handpicked by Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does Paul do? He confronts him, right? Right. Mm -hmm. He does. What do we do? He chastises him. <laughs> well, what do we do? What, what if we see somebody sitting in the church or is causing division? Well, me, myself, I do confront them. <laughs> Do Go, we, Jimmy. I do. Come on. Do we have the kahunas to do that? <laughs> I do, brother. I'm not going to... Listen, I'm going to make this, this... This has nothing to do with what we're studying, but it has to do with following the servant of Christ. Anybody in, in, in Maryville, Tennessee, who wants to come with me uh, to the roundabout every Monday, I go out there and I, I preach the gospel and ring my bell. So I, I, it's at 1 o'clock, so I just wanted to get that in. So believe me, I did confirm them. And I've got people that shoot me birds. I've got people that, that cuss me. And I've got people that say praise the Lord. So, you know, anybody who wants to come out there at 1 o'clock every, every Monday. That's on East Broadway, right? Yes, yes. Right around five points. Five points, nice. right, five points oh, yes. yeah. So, uh, you but, know, that's my little piece of trying to serve Jesus out in the public. I love right. you. And, well, and sometimes when we see things going on in the church that we're like, mm, I'm not sure about that. You sometimes have to speak up. We, yes. Sometimes we... we well, we're afraid we're going to hurt somebody's feelings. Right. We back off yeah. and I'm going to pray about mm -hmm. that. Lord, convict them. Or <laughs> let me chat with my friend. Hey, did you see that? Did you hear that? What do you think about that? Well, we have, to, we have to be bold in the Holy Spirit. So go, con go confront that. Not with violence, of course. Never, right. ever, ever, ever. But with love and, and, and compassion. And say, hey, brother, sister... You're but it's so easy for stress. me just to go to Carrie and say, Carrie, did you see what Shelby was doing? Right. Did you notice that? And then it, and no, I didn't see that. Well, let me tell you about what she did. Then it that becomes, becomes right, then it becomes gossip. But that's what we do. We're, we're sitting. People, a lot of people do do it. Yes, a lot of people do right. In Instead of just addressing it directly. Years right. ago, when I was drinking the milk, I did that. Then when God progressed me along in, in, in faith in Him, um, then when I started eating the meat, then I, my, my spiritual eyes was open. And uh, uh, it's like, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't be that person that sp spreads the gossip and backbites. Uh, be above that. Go to them in, in love and, and respect and talk to them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you got to confront them. Mm -hmm. yeah, period. You have to. And nobody, I don't like confrontation. But, but some, it, it, sometimes you just have to. You have to. It. Yes. Praise the Lord. And that's what Paul did. Paul says, when Peter came to Antioch, I had opposed him, opposed him to his face for what he did was very wrong. And then he it tells us exactly what he did was, that was wrong. He he was eating with these Gentiles. Jews came in. He got up from the Gentiles, went over with the Jews, and it caused a lot of the Jews that were eating with the Gentiles to go over. And it, it was the separation. <laughs> the hippies, you know, they came in and they separated. You know, the, the, the church people sit on this side, and the hippies on this side, and the church people were cons criticizing the hippies because they were barefoot, you know. And that's why the preacher sat in the doorway and washed their feet as they come in because they were dirty in the carpet, you know, or whatever, because they had dirt on their feet. And, mm. and, and Paul says, I confronted him. He says, when I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, I didn't do it behind closed doors. I did it in front of everybody because mm -hmm. he did this sin in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. I confronted him to his face. Yeah, since you, he, he says, since you are a, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? Because you already, he's saying, you've already had this meeting uh, at Nicene or whatever, in yeah, Nicene 15. Yeah, and he said, you, you know, they, they're not, they don't have to do this stuff, but yet you're making them by, you're causing division here. He says, uh, yeah, we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by the law. Come and we on. have believed we have believed in Jesus Christ so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. Look, my point is, Paul went in front of everybody and confronted Peter in front of everybody. He didn't do it behind closed doors. He didn't go talking to somebody no, else. No. He, he, no. he saw the issue and he, no. and he well, confirmed well, the issue. Uh, uh, uh.
Thanks for listening to the Ground It Podcast. If we could pray for you or encourage you in any way, please email us at thegrounditpodcast at gmail.com or you can text us at 865-418-2824. If you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified about new episodes. If you're listening on an app, leave us a five-star review, but most importantly, share the Grounded Podcast with a friend. God bless you and remember, keep grinding.